Morning, my friends. I am super sick here. I'm at the tail end of being super sick. I got a raging headache. I'm just waking up. And let's try to make a little video here. I can't do much talking. I can't do much, but it's been a couple days since I made a video and I feel like I left everybody high and dry, which is, oh, that's not funny. All last night, my throat, my mouth, so dry. I feel like I woke up every 10 minutes to take a drink of water. Had horrible dreams, you know, taking some NyQuil and all that stuff. Um, yeah, it, it's like a cold that's so bad, it's like weaponized by China or something like that. But this is the really, really fun stuff where, where you and I, or I, have done Gnosis my entire life to discover everything. And I've taught you to do the same. And everything I've taught you is through my own Gnosis. So it makes it so much fun to find somebody that says exactly the same things, exactly on the same page, and it's all done on my part. It's all done through divine revelation, Gnosis, taking those parables of Jesus Christ and living our life. Then... At some point, getting to hear those Gnostic scriptures where it's basically like listening to the Bible. It's as hard to figure out as it is the Bible, you know, and that's what I've done with all this stuff, all this stuff that's impossible to figure out. I just go, OK, well, I'm going to live my life and my own life experience. Gnosis is going to reveal it to me and it, and anybody else that figures out the same. Well, the truth will be identical. See, for me, I feel like I feel like giving this little speech is like the absolute obvious. But I feel like that with a lot in my life and I realize none of it is obvious. It oh, I got my I must have my um Oh, my little kitty is is hiding down here in this room and is now meowing and Oh no, now she's going to want to go back out, but then she's going to want to come back in. Let, let me open the door for the kitty. You want to go out, Nolly Nolly? Oh my God, when she scurried out the door and I'm closing the door, she let the, the cutest little meow out. As she's like scurrying out, it was the faintest little meow. <laughs> that was... Yeah, that's Nolly Kitty. I was just looking for her upstairs and I figured she'd be down here and then there she was. But I figure all this is so obvious and it's not at all. But what I'm getting at is look how different it is than the way everybody else lives their life. That that life of they all live in the herd. They all live in the middle of the pact. They all are in competition to be on the television show Jeopardy. Just that is um, the defect. That's the defect of all human beings. That's the defect of the human condition. And us human beings have chosen to live in a, a complete life inside of that defect, a, a fake way of intelligence, a fake way of everything, with your ego running your life, which is Satan itself. And I'm doing a lot better than I thought I would um, this morning. Yesterday, I was so sick the day before that. I, I've been really, really down. And I'm, I'm coming back. That every aspect of the universe, from the tiniest particle to the vast expanse of space itself, was formed from light. He said, light can carry information about the entire universe. Light by interaction. We're, we're just kind of getting into it. This is, um, this is a part, I guess I started it too early here. Different rays produce particles and all the diverse structures of matter. This part we're talking about how the universe is constructed of mind and how that's the original religion. It all comes from original gnosis well see if you're into eastern stuff buddhism any like just eastern stuff whatever you've heard this a billion times over you've seen it in um, countless movies um, everything and yeah it all comes from original gnostics matter is condensed or frozen light when we come to light we are coming like what i have fun with that because we're gonna find out 
like if we listen to a bunch of Alan Watts and, and Alan Watts is, uh, knows everything about all Eastern stuff. And yeah, it comes from the original religion of it all, but it wasn't a religion. It's a, a way of life and understanding of matter. Matter is condensed or frozen light. When we come to light, we are coming to the fundamental activity in which existence has its ground. In other words, matter is nothing but light whose rays have been slowed. Frozen light. According to Bohm, matter is transformed light. Similar oh, I thought I was coming back. I'm, I'm already starting to feel under. Oh, I thought I was coming. You know, when you're, you're sick and you're like, I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm going to get at it. So sometimes for me, that only takes the sun. You know, you're, you're sick and you feel a little bit better than all it takes is going outside. And you're like, oh, no, the sun, it triggered it into I, I realize how sick I am now. Now ice is transformed water. So what is matter? It's actually transformed mind, transformed light. Like I used to ha I used to have such a problem with this kind of stuff. You know, like my my logical brain, my logical thinking used to have such a hard time with this. And it's not a thing of where you just accept it. It's it's that your mind won't let you understand how that's a possibility and it might be more real than anything else. Just like when I couldn't understand if a rock is a living thing or not. That used to be, you know, when you're on the other side of it, you want to ridicule it. You know, Stephen Colbert, like, oh, how is a rock? Oh, I want to do all my comedy voices. It's going to make me cough. I got to, I got to watch out what I say and not say too much. But it used to be a thing of where my mind wouldn't let me go there. I couldn't figure it out. There was no avenue, no road for me to be able to figure out like, how is a rock a living being? And once you solve those types of riddles, you can't, you can't even imagine the time you're like, how could I, what, I, I can't even remember what that was like to not understand that. Collective dream, a world of frozen light. And this agrees with the discoveries of quantum mechanics and the like, like, um, especially I, I'm watching some fun stuff on, on our ancient structures. And if you add all the Tartaria and mud flooding into all that, which I mean, the, the real pictures of all the ancient stuff, do you know what happens in the conclusion? And I don't mean adding conspiracy stuff in there. I mean, the real things, do you know what happens in the end? None of it's explainable, and we end in simulation theory. None of it's explainable, and we end in everything is mind. And you know, that is a great way when you and I are trying to talk about all this stuff. A lot of time, I, I want to talk about all this stuff, but I don't know how to talk about it without everybody perceiving it as me talking about, oh, it's nihilism. You know, like, I'm the god of the universe, and you're all my dream. Well, see... Existence is a dream, but trying to frame it that way and say it that way leads us to nihilism. I think understanding the universe's mind, I think that that's how we can talk about this and it doesn't get confused as nihilism. You know, say if you say all of life is a dream, that's actually different than saying all of life is the mind, all, ever, all of creation is the mind. Which that uh, our hu our human existence sure is you know our human the way that we all think and the way that it's the mind on many different levels. A frozen light, and this agrees with the discoveries of quantum mechanics and the theories of David Bohm. The question is, if this ancient knowledge was correct over a millennia before modern. Yeah, I, I would. I wouldn't even say that it's. Um, like compatible with quantum physics, they do, it, it's what's real. And then it's a truth. Then if our science is real, if quantum physics is a real thing, then of course it's going to line up with the truth. Everything's going to line up with the truth. Could it also be right about how to transcend the material world and escape the cycle of reincarnation? And what about the evil god, Yaldabaoth, keeping us trapped here? That's crazy, right? Well, let me explain because the answer is incredible and has everything to do with the secret teachings that Jesus told Mary. In the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, after Jesus reveals to the disciples the interconnectedness of matter, he leaves them. 
and the disciples are left lost and weeping, having no idea what to do without their leader. But in their darkest hour, Mary steps forward and takes on the role of teacher and leader. Then Mary stood up, greeted them all, and said to her brethren, Do not weep and do not grieve, nor be irresolute. Mary then delivers a message that shakes the very foundations of their beliefs when Peter asks her to reveal her secret knowledge. Peter said to Mary, Sister, we know that the Savior loved you more than the rest of women. Tell us the words of the Savior, which you remember, which you know, but we do not, nor have we heard them. Mary answered and said, what is hidden from you, I will proclaim to you. Her hidden teachings challenged the very essence of their understanding of the world and pushed the boundaries of what they thought was possible. She reveals secret knowledge that Jesus had entrusted only to her, that the true nature of reality lies not in matter, but in the power of the mind. The Gospel of Mary says, For where the mind is, there is the treasure. He does not see through the soul nor through the spirit, but the mind that is between the two that is what sees the vision. Mary then describes the soul's journey through the afterlife. As the soul passes into the spiritual realm, it encounters a host of demons and dark forces that seek to trap it in the lower planes of existence. Now, could that actually be true? It's important to note that most of these stories aren't meant to be taken literally, but as metaphors and allegories. Carl Jung, the famous Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, was deeply interested in Gnosticism. He believed that the stories were symbolic expressions and representations of the structure of the unconscious mind. In other words, these demons represent the lower nature of humanity, the base desires and impulses that keep us bound to the material world. So these demons and dark powers aren't literal beings, but represent aspects of ourselves that we must overcome in order to transcend. What is one of the greatest demons to overcome? Ignorance. And of course, how does one overcome ignorance? through knowledge. The Gospel of Mary says, it came to the third power, which is called ignorance. The power questioned the soul, where are you going? In wickedness, you are bound. Mary describes the soul as defeating this power by replying, I was bound, though I have not bound. I have recognized that the all is being dissolved, both the earthly things and the heavenly. So what does that mean? It means that the soul has understood that the material world is an illusion, a temporary, transient expression of the all, the eternal, what we truly are. This overcoming of ignorance through knowledge represents attaining a higher level of consciousness that frees oneself from the illusions of the material world and achieving spiritual liberation. Now, in the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, after it describes the soul defeating all the powers, the Gospel continues with one of the most beautiful Gnostic passages. They ask the soul, Whence do you come, slayer of men? Or where are you going, conqueror of space? The soul answered and said, what binds me has been slain, and what turns me about has been overcome, and my desire has been ended, and ignorance has died. In an eon, I was released from a world, and in a type from a type, and from the fetter of oblivion, which is transient. From this time on, will I attain to the rest of the time, of the season, of the eon, in silence. Slayer of men and conqueror of space describes the soul having broken free from the illusion of matter and the material body through overcoming ignorance and attaining self-knowledge. Now what about Yaldabao, Fidemiurge, the so-called creator of the... Oh, I had to step out for a second, my friends. I hope you had some fun without my commentary for a moment. I, I, I definitely am a lot sicker than I thought material realm that keeps souls trapped in the cycle of reincarnation. Now, even though this being isn't mentioned directly in the Gospel of Mary, it's... Isn't it so much fun to hear all of this after you've only heard me say it? Isn't that, isn't that what this, this Gnosis thing is so fun? There's those sayings about finding the light in a crowd. Like, only you and I we get to have we get to experience all these ancient sayings for real like finding a light in the crowd well see when all of life hides inside of a crowd when all of life is controlled by joe biden and they all purposely hide in the crowd 
They're, they've never experienced finding something like this. They've never experienced living their life in gnosis. You, you discover all these truths and you're alone in it. Well, you don't feel alone because it's all from Jesus Christ. So you feel actually comforted and you feel part of everything. You feel more part, more connected and more whole. And then you wish that there was somebody to join in it. It's funny. You feel more full, more content, more happy. Um, you've conquered your self-loathing, everything. And then it, it's like, yeah, but it creates a great divide between you and humanity, then you wish, well, the only thing left is for humanity to take part in this. And then that's what you and I are doing with this. It's really fun because you and I, we do, I've done it alone my entire life. Then to find somebody else that has discovered these things, well, that's fun. Leader of the material realm that keeps souls trapped in the cycle of reincarnation. Now, even though this being isn't mentioned, you know, see, that's why you, you know why I do everything like I do. I'm trying to invite everybody. I do this mystery school, as in I understand Gnosticism is original Christianity. Then the Christian Church. See, we should call it. We should call Christianity something other than. The Christian Church. The Christian Church is the demiurge. It, all of this shit has taken over Christianity and made a false version of it. Same thing with every religion and everything. That's why Jesus Christ isn't a religion. Jesus Christ is a way of life. So we could always build a building called a church if we all wanted to celebrate Jesus Christ and his teachings. But Jesus Christ isn't a church. Jesus Christ isn't a religion. Jesus Christ is a way of life. Trapped in the I, I'm trying to invite everybody. I'm trying to um, invite Christians if they're tired of the lie of believing in all this shit. They've been convinced not to know what it is. Um, I'm trying to invite every single person along no matter who you are. Of reincarnation. Now, even though this being isn't mentioned directly in the Gospel of Mary, it's the central antagonist, the big bad in Gnosticism. Is it true that we're really being trapped by an evil cosmic entity? Well, remember that these are all metaphors for structures of the psyche of your own mind. See, it, it's stuff like that. Remember, these things are metaphors for structures of the psyche in your own mind, blah, blah, blah. Um, in nowhere in these in these Gnostic Gospels and any of that is it ever explained. You have to use divine revelation. You have to be a real mystic. You know how J.P. Sears, he's a seer. Yeah, but make, being a seer means you're the blindest of them all. Remember Jesus Christ is teaching? You know, that's, that's so, everybody already knows that. Everybody, even people that think that they don't know Jesus Christ know that teaching. Those who claim to see are the most blind of them all. So it means we're going to have to learn how to do these things for real. We're going to have to learn how to be a mystic for real. We're going to have to learn how to be, how to be a seer for real. Then you know how you do all those things for real? It all just goes down to, well, you got your parables of Jesus Christ. Use Gnosis to figure them out. You, you'll be a seer without ever claiming that you were a seer. You'll be all these things. You'll be the mystic. And you'll just be some humble, regular old dude going, I don't even know what a mystic is. I just do my teachings of Jesus Christ and I use my life experience to discover what they mean. And they'll go, whoa, that made you a mystic. You didn't know that? And you're like, you don't know, I don't know your names. I don't know the names that you put on everything and all that. I just know my, the way to do the teachings of Jesus Christ. Well, remember that these are all metaphors for structures of the psyche of your own mind. But look, look. Let's understand how amazing this is. Let like think of everybody in the world. Think of anybody that would ever come to my mystery school. Think of anybody that would ever all the people in religion, they all use drunk righteousness. I'm just trying to say, look at how nobody can get this far. Nobody their own ego, the the, the demiurge prevents them from understanding that this is structures of your own mind. This is how we think. This is, it makes people crazy to know this. It makes them turn into psychopaths. It makes narcissists 
turn into psychopaths to hear all this shit. The narcissist who thinks that their shit doesn't stink. The narcissist who thinks they're so perfect in everything with all their wicked shit. And for the narcissist to hear that they're all the shit that they pride themselves on, to hear that it's really wicked and evil makes them fucking crazy. So this is a big deal. It's, it's no little thing. Mentioned directly in the Gospel of Mary. It's the central antagonist, the big bad in Gnosticism. Is it true that we're really being trapped by an evil cosmic entity? Well, remember that these are all metaphors for structures of the psyche of your own mind. So this evil being isn't a literal entity. According to a Jungian interpretation, this evil being... See, this is what makes it fun. Did you hear him? He mentioned Carl Jung. Well, you, you understand my satire here at the mystery school. I'm going to shit on everybody. If somebody goes, oh, Carl Jung, I'm going to go shut up with your books. Shut the fuck up with your stupid books because you need to learn it yourself through Gnosis. Through, once, see, what gives, you, what, what gives you the ability to do these things correctly? You need to go discover it yourself. Then, when you hear that Carl Jung discovered the same, you get to have a really fucking fun moment of celebration. And this is how it's supposed to work. You're, you're supposed to, just like school, and we're doing math, and the teacher asks you, you to show your work. So you show your work, Carl Jung, he shows his work, and since it was math, you and you were you both came to the right conclusion you're both right together you didn't need to copy off of carl jung's paper so i'm gonna shit on every single one of these people i'll even shit on alan watts if you want to use alan watts as your scapegoat i'll shit on alan watts then when you learn it yourself and we realize it's all on the same page now it's time to celebrate that we discovered the same you know, when I when I describe it that way, doesn't it just make it like, oh, weren't we supposed to do that in school? I was it, all this stuff that we're calling religion. It was it was a way of um, do your own work and don't copy off of other people's papers. And then that's what people do with their entire lives. Their entire lives are copying and copying off of somebody else's paper. Going, oh, I'm not going to get blamed. I mean, that's that's a whole hour video of me talking. Or if I could talk, I would make you the hour-long video right now, it, along with this one. But I'm going downhill. I keep on talking. I'm making this video. I'm doing it, guys. I'm get, I'm not leaving you high and dry. I'm giving you your bang, the bang for the buck. And isn't this a fun video? Isn't this really fun? It's the central antagonist, the big bad in Gnosticism. Is it true that we're really being trapped by an evil cosmic entity? Well, remember that these are all men. I want to play it. Oh, I can't talk. I, I, I need to talk. Uh, isn't it fun? Though, even this guy right here, this guy has searched through all of these things like Buddhism and, and um, oh, I'm just trying. I can't even think. My brain's not working. He's gone through all these same like religions that Alan Watts has and, and you search and you're just led to Jesus Christ. He, th This guy, he's being led to Jesus Christ more and more every day and he's figuring out that the original religion of the entire world is this gnosticism so it's getting we all out of everything that he's learned and all these different religions and all, it's all getting weeded out it, it, it's going to take a little bit more time and he's if he hasn't figured it out already all of this is jesus christ every single bit of this is jesus christ true that we're really being trapped by an evil cosmic entity as i mean you couldn't know this without jesus christ without his parables all of this knowledge comes from jesus christ all of this how to know how to defeat it all jesus christ there's only it, it ever you know that saying that that thing it's a truth you literally cannot do this without Jesus Christ. It's, it's more than a man. It's more than a name.
Well, remember that these are all metaphors for structures of the psyche of your own mind. So this evil being isn't a literal entity. According to a Jungian interpretation, this evil being... See, see, bro, we don't need your Jungian interpretation because you came to the same truth yourself. And it happens to be exactly on the same page as Carl Jung. You don't, you don't need to use Carl Jung like he's the authority and you're not. I, dude, I see you is exactly the same authority. I understand how this works. You discovered it yourself. Carl Jung discovered it yourself. Then human beings will think you're more credible if you're like, but see, I see it as though you're pawning it off on Carl Jung because it's you who discovered it. So then why is it like, well, I mean, I didn't discover it. Look at how it's this Carl Jung guy over here. Like we're blaming like it, like somehow we would be afraid that we're wrong, but we're not because we're on the truth. See, this is different than that demi urge reality. You're not afraid that you're wrong. I'm not afraid that I'm wrong. We know that we're 100% correct. See, we're, it's not, it's beyond being right about things. It's consistent with God. It's more, it's a lot more than having an opinion, a whimsical opinion than going, oh, I hope I'm right with that. Uh, you're dead nuts accurate, but you hit a bullseye with it. I hit a bullseye with it. Carl Jung hit a bullseye with it. So we're all actually equals in this. But human beings will think that you're somehow more, and it's a, it all can be explained easily. Human beings will think that you're more credible if you somehow attribute all this to Carl Jung because he lived a long time ago and wrote a book. So silly. For structures of the psyche of your own mind. So this evil being isn't a literal entity. According to a Jungian interpretation, this evil being that keeps you trapped in the material world represents the ego. Identifying with the ego. Represents the ego. Identifying with the ego is what creates it. Creates a false being of yourself. The false being is ignorance. This demi-urge. When we look for it's Satan, then we go, okay, Satan must be this figure. Then we go look for, okay, where's Satan? You'll never find it. It dissolves. It disappears. It evaporates. It was our own ignorance that created hell. Our own opinions. We created a fake version of ourself that believes intelligence is its own opinion. And that is what the devil is that's what the demi urge that's what the creator god of this world is the creator god of the old testament it's for structures of the psyche of your own mind he, so he controls everyone and everything did have you ever seen when somebody go against this literally it's a real fucking thing donald trump donald trump is a perfect because it's what they would do to me if you all made me famous, they would literally do exactly what they do to Donald Trump. They already do it to me. It's already been done my entire life. Donald Trump is just a grand example. He's a, he's a bigger example of what has been done to me my entire life. Andrew Tate. They would have Andrew Tated me instantly and everybody would have been agree, in agreement. See, you know what's interesting about Andrew Tate is... Every single person decided to cancel Andrew Tate. Every single person was in agreement in it. Then the next day, about 90% of people pretended that they weren't. They do, they do that every time. That's not an anomaly. They do that every They all come out in agreement. We're going to cancel. They all, all these people that they don't, all these people that would never say he's a misogynist. All of a sudden going, uh, all these people that would never be up in arms about real weird shit, real hardcore lefties going, we got to cancel this person because he said this misogynist thing. Then all these normal people that would never go along with this were all going along with it. 100%. 100% of them were going along with, we have to cancel. And then the next day they all said, I'm not do. I didn't do that. But do you know what? I'm going to make a video for you guys. Uh, uh, there's 10 of them um, where 
I can pull up their video. If I played back their own video for them, it would make them go crazy. Um, the Some Ordinary Gamers, Mudahar. You know, hopefully you guys remember him. I've made videos on him every now and then. He's one of those YouTube policemen. Gets three million views a video. Um, if I showed him his own video where he's like, we gotta cancel Andrew Tate. He said this misogynist thing. Nope, that's gotta go. If you showed Mudahar his own video back, he would go fucking crazy going, that's not me. I didn't do, no, I didn't, you, I didn't do that. And no, bro, you've done it your whole life. All human beings have done it their whole life. You know, it's different. The internet, all these fucking YouTubers, they all made a video on it before they would have gaslit me. They would have called me crazy. Oh no, I, I actually, I have all of your evidence and what you really do. Well, remember that these are all metaphors for structures of the psyche of your own mind. So this evil being isn't a literal entity. According to a Jungian interpretation, this evil being that keeps you trapped in the material world represents the ego. Identifying with the ego, believing that it's the real you, can keep you bound to the material realm. Yelda Baelf said... I, I know, guys. I know. You would think. You would swear that this guy has been watching my videos because it's impossible for anybody to know what I know and say it back word for word. This is the magic. This is what how fun it is to live in Gnosis. Isn't it weird? Isn't it like magical? Isn't it like, whoa, it's a, it, you, it, you find a brother. You find a brother. How is it even possible? I've discovered all this stuff through Gnosis, and I say it in my own ways because no one's told me it. Um, how is it even possible somebody says identically what I say? world represents the ego. Identifying with the ego, believing that it's the real you, can keep you bound to the material realm. Yelda Baelf says, I am the only God in existence, when that's not true, he's a false God. And the ego says, I am the true me, when that's not true, you are much more than the ego. But see, there's a dangerous misinterpretation that's going around these days in spiritual communities about the ego, and this needs to be cleared up. Now, there's nothing wrong with oh, the ego. Oh, do, do you know what the, okay, this is going to be hilarious. The spiritual communities, there's no possible way for them to know what the ego is. They have it backwards, just like everybody else does. So they think, oh my God, when somebody's create, creative, talented, or skilled, oh, we got we to gotta get rid of that because that person thinks that they're so fucking good at everything. So understand, the ego is the most crafty motherfucking thing that has ever existed. It hides within itself. It splits off into other figures. It creates another ego, then dresses it up with the devil, then points at it and goes, look, I found the devil. When it was really the ego. The ego is it, it, it symbolized as wearing many hats. Satan wears many hats. This shit is the craftiest shit and it will always convince you that, oh no, I'm not the ego, I'm the real self. It will always try to, and it will trick you. Uh, and if you do not have an education in this, if you're, you're not diligent with this, if you're not highly educated in all of this, you just, it's plaything. I mean, this thing is, it's you. It's literally the way that everybody thinks that they're, that they're getting one over on everybody. The way that they think all their manipulation is intelligence and crafty. That's all they know. They think that they're being their true selves. Um, the ego will lie to them. They'll be convinced and they'll be all wrong and they'll be infinitely wrong and they'll be infinitely confused. So I just want to bring the hardcore truth to this because I feel that he's a little bit light and fluffy in this area. He, he's saying some light and fluffy things like, um, oh, the spiritual community um, is the spiritual community is a hell of a lot worse than anybody else. You know, people that, the, the, the spiritual community is a bunch of people that claim to see. See, the average um, citizen, the average public, they don't claim to see. The average public is a lot more humble than the spiritual community that believes that they all do, that they believe that they've all learned all this stuff because they're a group. 
It's a group that decide, they, they never learn anything for real. They're a group that decides if you joined the group, then it means you're spiritual. Well, that's a lot. This shit's a lot worse. I, I, you know who would be a lot easier to teach? Uh, just the average public. Somebody that doesn't think that they know how to see. Somebody that thinks that they, these people think that they've all achieved this shit from joining a group. Oh, well, they need to be um, set straight on that a dangerous misinterpretation that's going around these days in spiritual communities about the ego and this needs to be cleared up now there's nothing wrong with the ego the ego is not actually bad it, exactly i know that's one of the hardest things that i have to teach it because but it becomes our friend it be it be it, we have to have the ego because there's no way to exist on planet earth without it shakespeare said it the best the world's a stage and everybody's actors on it. Your ego is the actor. It's how your true self, it's how you be an actor on planet Earth. So when we learn this, we, use, we learn to use our ego properly. One of the best ways I've heard this said is that um, the, the band, the verve, and when he says in the in the end of it, and he's saying it over and over, I'm a million different people from one day to the next. I can break my mold. Oh, 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 oh. And um, yeah, I'm a million different people. We're a million different people from one moment to the next. He cleared up. Now, there's nothing wrong with the ego. The ego is not actually bad or evil. The ego is what allows you to have self-awareness. If we didn't have an ego, our consciousness would be like animals. But you don't want to identify with the ego. That's the difference. The ego is a powerful tool, and you should use it, but it's not what you are. Just like a fork is an... Well, see, that gives us, that gives us a great journey right here to discover... What is the difference between ourselves and the ego? And it's not going to be so easy. It's not going to be like a duality. You see how I, how I put it? Like um, us, the true self or the ego. It's not, it's not going to be resolved like that. It's going to be so far outside of our comprehension. And we're going to be able to comprehend it self-awareness if we didn't have an ego our consciousness would be like animals but you don't want to identify with the ego that's the difference the ego is a powerful tool and you should use it you you see how do you see how nobody can nail me down as though when i make my regular old mystery school videos i'll make them on like republicans it doesn't really matter i could make it on republicans democrats or whatever but Everybody will try to perceive me as like, well, is he saying Republican things right now? Is he saying demo? What? What? Where? Where is he coming from? How, how do I nail him down on one side of duality? Can I, and people, most people won't hear what I say. It what I say scrambles their brain because they will feel very uneasy until they get to pin me down as like, well, it, he's saying mostly Republican things, so I wanna like label him as a Republican because it makes me feel good because people feel real weird. It's, this, it's really weird with the opposite too. You'll have the same problem with communism. You'll try to label communism as, oh, that's hardcore um, lefty stuff. It's the antichrist. It's the anti-equation to what I do. So equally, nobody will be able to figure out what side I'm on because I'm not on a side. I'm on the side of truth. I'm on the side of being unbiased truth. So I go wherever truth is. Truth is, is my thing. Unbiased truth. And yeah, it, 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 it's pretty interesting, huh? A lot, a lot to say when I really shouldn't be saying too much right now. And, and you know that I'm, I'm smoking one of these nice fatty cigars right now. Oh, another thing I shouldn't be doing. They're so good. Oh, they're so good. Ego, our consciousness. It makes me think, I'm only, I'm, only, I'm only smoking some cigars for some fun at the moment. I've been doing it for like a week or two or three now. I mean, I've tried a lot of them at this point, and I haven't gone into like expensive cigars yet. I'm staying, I'm staying with um, 
like the regular stuff. I'm smoking these black and milds, but it's the casino flavor. Oh, it makes me think anybody that's a smoker, smoking cigarettes. I smoke cigarettes all my life. They don't taste good and they're disgusting and everything about them. And now I get it. Like when you're a smoker, you eat a, a really good meal. Then you ruin the whole thing with a cigarette. Did you know cigars actually taste really good? Did you know that if you smoke a cigar after a meal, it actually complements the meal? Like I'm not, I don't drink um, alcohol anymore, but if I did, I could like a good cigar, one of these casinos, um, black and mild. Oh, with a with a, like a glass of wine, the they just would complement each other perfectly. Then after a meal. It's like cigarettes, cigarettes, ew, disgusting. Be like animals, but you don't want to identify with the ego. That's the difference. The ego is a powerful tool and you should use it, but it's not what you are. Just like a fork is an important tool for eating. Oh, bro, you, bro, it's Shakespeare. The world's a stage and we're all actors on it. I can't find it. That's why that saying is so powerful. That's why we all know it. We all have to know it in some degree. The whole world's a stage and we are at, when you really get that, there's a barrier. And I'm so proud of you at the mystery school who has broken this barrier. It was so difficult for Jane. Jane used to get so fucking mad at me with this one. And you talk about being your true self and your ego tells you that you're supposed to be one rigid, hardcore figure that's a, um, that's a um, drunk righteousness of the Bible and you're mad at everybody. And every single person is going to do that. Through all this talk, you're going to think being your true self is this, you're, I'm this one figure un, and, and you're, you're, you're so wrong and you suck and, and you suck. You're horrible. You're fucking horrible. But your your brain won't let you think your way out of this. And remember what that was like, Jane. I mean, there's a, I'm representing a lot of people at the mystery school through Jane right now. And if you haven't beaten this, we can all tell. We can all because you go around. You, you've been told this. Okay, I want you to be your true self, and I don't want you to be run by the ego. And all you do, you become the ego tenfold. Is, isn't that the way to explain it? Isn't that what happened, Jane, when I told you, okay, stop being an ego version of yourself and be, be your true self. And then you think, okay, I'm going to be my truth. And then you double down, triple down, quadruple down 10 times the ego. Then you come up to me and, oh, and, and there's too much to say. I can't talk. I, I feel like, I feel like I'm going too far here. Um, I'm going to start coughing and all kinds of stuff. I, I feel like a, I got a fever that's about to break. And, oh, that's going to be so nice when this fever breaks and I just start sweating. Then I'm going to feel a lot better. I don't want to identify with the ego. That's the difference. The but, ego... re but remember that? Re that must have tormented you. That When I said that, when I said... Um, I want you, uh, when I said the Shakespeare stuff, when I said the world's a stage and you're an actor on it and you kept on doubling down on the ego, quadrupling 10 times the ego and you know that it's wrong. You know that it's wrong because here's how you know, you'll know you're wrong. If you're in the ego version of this, you keep trying to whittle yourself down to one character and make yourself out to be just the person that you are. You're like, oh, I'm just me. And no, I'm everybody. I, you, you, when you come to this for real, you realize that you can have any personality that you want. You can use any words that you want. You're a million different people from one moment to the next. There's nothing wrong with the ego. The ego is not actually bad. Or... It, yeah, you're right. There is nothing wrong with it because it becomes fun now. Instead of the ego beating us down our entire life, once the world becomes a stage and we're actors on it, now it's playtime. All of life transforms. Everything becomes a lot more fun. And... Oh, there's something, oh, there's a lot of things that I have to say because we just had um, recently a death 
and and here's some here's something that's comforting and and also difficult all this stuff completely transforms the way that you think of death like when your mother dies your father dies oh i still want to cry all the time that my father's dead oh i still want to oh daddy I love you, Daddy. Where are you, Daddy? I miss you. I just, oh, uh, the, uh, all kinds of things like, oh, I wish I did this different. I wish I loved my daddy more. And, um, oh, and we're horrible kids. We're all, rebe every single one of us is rebellious. Then when your father dies young, like mine did, you have a whole life of like, yeah, but dad, I was a rebellious, a horrible child. It's like, if you could see me now, I'm teaching everybody about Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that horrible, rebellious child that I used to be. Look, look at what I do now. You, you wouldn't even know me anymore, Dad. The way that I, um, I used to be a rebellious death metal, death metal, death metal playing in very dangerous places in Hollywood and L.A., having very dangerous friends. And now I'm bringing everybody to Jesus Christ. Now I'm, I'm teaching all of us how to co overcome our self-loathing and all of that. And all of this, when, when you see life as it's, a, it's truly a stage, when you see that it's all mind, when you see that it's truly a stage and we're all actors on it, it doesn't make you live a more dangerous life. It doesn't, it doesn't do, it, it changes the way that you perceive life. It changes the way that you perceive death. It changes the way. That you, and um, even to add in the discussion of where Jay was asking, well, what if I die and then my girlfriend and my family keep on living? What, how do I see them in the afterlife or whatever? And I don't know anything about an afterlife. That's out of the scope uh, of the mystery school. But do you know what I do know? Is time doesn't work the same is, um, you know, I did make a video on that and we'll make a follow-up one on that. It'll be fun when I can talk a little bit more. He cleared up. Now, there's nothing wrong with the ego. The ego is not actually bad or evil. The ego is what allows you to have self-awareness. If we didn't have an ego, our consciousness would be like animals. But you don't want to identify with the ego. That's the difference. The ego is a powerful tool and you should use it but it's not what you are. Just like a fork is an important tool for eating, you don't want to get rid of it, but you don't want to identify with it either. It's not you. The ego is an important tool, but it's not what you You know how you you know how you're um you know if you're living by the ego is if everything you're worried about sinning. That that sinning thing. If you're worried about sinning, you live your whole life by your ego and the super critic of your ego just beats you down all the time. That shit was never God. It was the ego masquerading around God. If you, if you live all of life thinking that you're supposed to be shameful and ashamed of shit, that was never God. That's your ego. That is not your true self. That's not the true compass of God. That's not if you, if you dictate your whole life through, am I supposed like a Catholic? Oh, is all life supposed to be guilty? You're living your life one, is one tormented person. You're tormented by your own ego. Just like a... F oh, you will be so fooled. You will be so fooled by your ego. The policeman. You'll think that this policeman thing, your ego, is God making you feel guilty. No, that's Satan right there. That's all that guilt of Satan. If you're walking around your whole life thinking that this stuff's about feeling guilty, no, this is about freedom. It's the God of the Old Testament that makes you feel guilty all the time. Jesus Christ releases you from all of that. Jesus Christ goes, in most of this, it's like you weren't even sinning. And you think your ego has convinced you that your whole life is the sinning thing. And it's a lot different than Jesus Christ fixes all of this through the pot prodigal son. Peter falls, Peter is an ego version. Peter falls to his knees and goes, oh, I'm the dumbest man that ever existed. 
the the way that Jesus Christ solves all of this through the prodigal son, we're humbled for real. The ego also thinks it has a version of this, making you feel guilty your whole life. Then Jesus Christ has to alleviate the guilt. You you think your whole life is about being regulated through the ego, and the ego tells you that you're sinning, and I'm sinning, and you shouldn't feel guilty about this. And then Jesus Christ goes. You're, you're forgiven for all these sins that aren't sins. You're forgiven for all this shit, uh, your ego existence where you believe your ego is God and your ego is telling you to feel guilty all the time and you're a dirty sinner and you got to pay for it. And Jesus Christ goes, Jesus, how about you just leave all that behind? It sounds like some shitty stuff that you live in. How about you're forgiven for all those sins that aren't sins and um, go and sin no more. Because you shouldn't be thinking that way. You shouldn't be doing it that way. That's not the proper way. And you think that you're not being an ego version. And that is the epitome of being the ego. It's a powerful tool and you should use it, but it's not what you are. Just like a fork is an important tool for eating. You don't want to get rid of it, but you don't want to identify with it either. It's not you. The ego is an important tool, but it's not what you are. You're something so much more, an eternal being. Of oh, you, you know, and you know what gives me? Um, yeah, I, I, in, in, in a comedy sort of way. It gives me, um, oh, I can't even think because I'm so sick. I shouldn't even talk at all. I shouldn't even talk at all. It gives me job security. And, and then I can say, hey, guys, if you're learning for real, please donate to the mystery schools. Throw some PayPal shekels in there. Throw some cash app shekels in there. Join the Patreon. I got lots of content coming towards Patreon. Because you need to be reminded of this every day. That's how bad this shit is. That... <laughs> It, it, it's required that every day mystery school curriculum that I make a video and we learn more about ourselves. And um, that's the way that's what real church is supposed to be. It, it's you, real church. The, the church of Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ said, I build my church on this right here. And it's Peter. And if Jesus Christ builds his church on Peter, it's that humbling of Peter. It, it's you and I. It means that we come together and we share our testimony. Our testimony is the human condition. Our testimony is, oh, I thought I was such a great person, but I didn't realize how I hide this from myself. It must be my ego tricking me. Then you realize, oh, whoa, I also thought I was being my um, true self. But you know what? The ego got me in that way too. And that's how our testimonies benefit each other. That's real church. You know, in real church, we go get our parables of Jesus Christ. We get our teachings of Jesus Christ. But this is, this is what we share. This is what we talk to each other. This is the, That's some real grown-up shit. Because you know that all these things that you learn about yourself, if you try to share them with people, it makes people crazy because they've never investigated themselves. They're really good at lying to themselves. And if you tell these things that you've learned about yourself to other people, oh, they'll want to kill you just like they did Jesus Christ. So, cool. so imagine what a grown-up place, what a, an adult place an actual real church is, which is actually our mystery school. Yeah, it's a place where you can come and share your testimony. You can come share your human condition. And guess what? I won't cancel you for that. But the rest of the world sure the fuck will. Either. It's not you. The ego is an important tool, but it's not what you are. You're something so much more, an eternal being of energy. So according no, to it, the... it makes me, it makes me, and you and I, we will do it. Uh, we need to go through the Gospels where all the garments are talking about and space travel. Space travel and all the garments and how Jesus is clothed. And yeah, yeah, we, we need to go there next. That either. It's not you. The ego is an important tool, but it's not what you are. You're something so much more, an eternal being of energy. So according to the Jungian interpretation, Yaldabaoth represents the ego 
or it can also represent the shadow self, the dark recesses of your unconscious mind that must be explored. Mary Magdalene reveals that the material world is an illusion and that it can be conquered through self-knowledge and overcoming of one's lower nature. That is, it's not faith that saves you, but your own mind. But we have a problem. See, Mary reveals... Well, see, see it, there's that one loophole, man. That, that it's not a loophole that you're st you still have to figure it out. We can't save ourselves because all these things are things that we can't think our way into. We literally need the teachings of Jesus Christ. We literally... What would we have a life in Gnosis about? If there wasn't Jesus Christ's teachings... There is no life in Gnosis. So we need a guide. We need a higher power. It's Jesus Christ. You're not going to be able to think your way there. Saves you, but your own mind. So, but so yes, you're correct. What saves you is your own mind. What saves you, but without Jesus Christ enlightenment, there's no path. There's no road. All, no, it, without Jesus Christ, nobody, we wouldn't know about any of this at all. Without Jesus Christ, we'd just be a complete slave of all of this with no way of knowing any of it at all. So shouldn't we at least give Jesus Christ at least that much credit? Nature. That is, it's not I mean, I mean, it's, isn't it funny to even put it in a way as like, oh, shouldn't we give Jesus Christ that much credit? We literally can't do it without Jesus Christ. Literally, it's like there's no, how you can't think your way into these things. Through self-knowledge and overcoming of one's lower nature. That is, it's not faith that saves you, but your own mind. But we have a problem. See, Mary reveals these secrets to the disciples, but some of them don't believe her. Why? Because she's a woman. The gospel of Yeah, because they're not as badass. See, this is what's fun. They're not badass like Andrew Tate. They're a bunch of misogynist. Oh, they're horrible. They're not badass, satirical, um, esoteric teacher like Andrew Tate is. But some of so these people are just horrible, and then they they're they, it, it's it's um sexist, but it's the same as Jim Crow. They think that women are somehow like lesser life forms. No, women are the the feminine, and men are the masculine, and we all complement each other. And men are from uh, Mars, and women are from Venus. Don't believe her. Why? Because she's a woman. The Gospel of Mary says, when Mary had said this, she fell silent. But Andrew answered and said to the brethren, say what you wish to say about what she has said. I at least do not believe. And, and, and everybody knows this. This is so such a famous, so, so famous right here. Said this. Of where Jesus Christ chose Mary and then they all got upset about it. Certainly these teachings are strange ideas. Peter answered and spoke concerning these same things. He questioned... Nothing's changed. Look at how all of them, they go, these teachings are so strange. It's nothing like our Old Testament God. It really gives you... Uh, it, the, all of this really gives you a view into all these people grew up in the Old Testament. All these disciples of Jesus Christ... All their ways are the God of the Old Testament. Everything they know. So understand they're students. These disciples, they're all students. And they confuse Jesus Christ with the God of the Old Testament. Everything is like, but Jesus, we know the way of the God of the Old Testament. Everything that you do is so weird. Understand that every single thing that Jesus Christ, that, that people said to Jesus Christ, they're like, yeah, but Jesus, you're going to do the ways of our God, right? And Jesus Christ said, no, I'm not going to do the ways of your ego, your, your God of the Old Testament. I'm here to destroy that and fulfill the law. And the only thing that they knew is their God of the Old Testament. They they figure every single thing that Jesus Christ does is going to be their God of the Old Testament. And if you do anything different, it's like, oh, that's forbidden. Oh, you, you're not allowed to do that. You're only allowed to do God of the Old Testament. So they're going to call it all oh, this. These are really weird teachings here them about the savior did he really speak privately with a woman and not openly to us are we to turn about and all listen to her did he prefer her to us 
Then Mary wept and said to Peter, My brother Peter, what do you think? Do you think that I've made this up myself in my heart? Or that I'm lying about the Savior? Levi answered and said to Peter, Peter, you have always been hot-tempered. Now I see you contending against the woman like the adversaries. But if the Savior made her worthy, who are you indeed to reject her? Surely the Savior... You know what? And let's end it right here, because I think we're done with the part of Yaltabaoth and the ego and stuff. Let's go a little bit more, just so we finish the context. I don't want to leave it in, in the middle knows her very well so what's going on here now remember that a so lot I, I don't want to switch the context too much i want everybody to remember for the rest of the day the rest of the year the rest of your life this video what we talked about so i don't want to change gears too much because then you might remember the wrong stuff we're here to remember everything that we've just done for the last 59 minutes portion of the Gospel of Mary is not meant to be taken as being literally true. The author likely knew that women were being treated poorly by the church. Yeah, see, I knew you're going to go into like feminist type stuff, which, which is fine, which is cool. We, we can do some female supremacy. This to emphasize Shit, this shit's fucking sexy. The importance of women, that they should be allowed to teach. And they understood truths about reality that the men of the church were missing. But the Gnostic Christians well, yeah. believe... Well, yeah, in... yeah. Like, I, I don't like the details of everything. Women love that shit. Women love to be the student, and I love to be the teacher, and I don't really know the names of everything, and women love to know the names of things, and I don't know the terminologies of every. and women love to know the terminologies of everything, and it's a great compliment held the key to understanding the divine. They saw women as powerful heroes. Eating from the tree of knowledge was celebrated, and women often represented... Like, like, like you, you, when I'm like, oh, what's that word I'm looking for? I'll, like, I'm looking for, like, hey, where's a woman? A, a woman knows that word I'm looking for. Um, oh, I don't know how to spell that word correctly. Oh, I'm sure a woman knows how to spell that. I don't know the real, the, the actual terminology words for what I'm trying to say. I bet you a woman does conceptual thought or intuition, granting humanity the wisdom to conquer the illusions of this world. Some Gnostics even viewed Jesus himself as a messenger of a divine feminine being named Sophia who represented wisdom. But the patriarchal forces of the church suppressed these beliefs, likely fearing the rise of empowered women. So was Mary- Oh, sounds so fucking sexy, empowered women. Oh, Mary. Those empowered women are going to dominate all the beta males and then make make a, a harmonious connection like that. To Jesus. Personally, I don't think so. I think these stories are metaphors. And I believe saying that Christ kissed her on the mouth and that she was his companion means that she was equal to Jesus, that she understood his teachings. In other words, that women can... Uh, oh, we're going to find out a, a huge... I, I love that. The kiss. We have the Godfather, and the Godfather takes all this stuff from Jesus Christ. So the Godfather has like the kiss of death. And um, there's all these kisses that are going on. Judas has a kiss, his betrayal kiss. Everybody has a, a kiss. But was Mary really married to Jesus? Personally, I don't think so. It, it, even like um, Pilate, the, the whole confrontation with Jesus and Pilate, everybody has a kiss. I think these stories then Jesus has the authentic kiss. Everybody kisses everybody like on the cheek or something, you know, on the hand. You, you kiss royalty on the hand and you, the Godfather is going to kiss on the cheek like, like a blind eye thing. I kiss you on the, the left side or I kiss you on the right side or I kiss you on both. And then Jesus kiss you straight on the fucking mouth are metaphors and i believe saying that christ kissed her on the mouth and that she was his companion means that she was equal to jesus that she understood his teachings in other words that women can have authority as leaders and teachers just oh you're gonna pump them oh you're gonna pump them women up oh you're gonna you're, you're women oh you're gonna pump them up too hard uh-oh teaching we're gonna need andrew tate to come come around and beat down the women a little bit because they're getting too high and mighty in their egos because that's what it really would be <laughs> i'm just having fun with it no, we're supposed to compliment men and women, not everybody be this um, 
this horrible fucking figure standing out there alone thinking that they're almighty in their own opinions. And we're supposed to be building relationships between people, communities, and the whole world under God, not the whole world under the new world Joe Biden order. And that she was his companion means that she was equal to Jesus. That she under So let's end it here. I hope everyone has the greatest day and the greatest life. I'm going to go be really sick for the rest of the day. I expended all my energy. I'm sweating. I must be starting to break that fever. Oh, I'm feeling clammy and horrible. And I'm so sore. You, you think I'd hop into bed? I don't even know what I'm going to do until I can hop into bed. My neck is so sore. Everything's so sore. My nose is so stuffy. Blah, blah. I hope everyone has the greatest day and the greatest life you could possibly have.